There have been frauds in history, but this notorious con artist took things to a whole new level when he sold a made-up airport for a mammoth $242 million. Emmanuel Nibude Odenigwe, famously known as Awal of Abagana, pulled one of the greatest frauds in history. The scam's mastermind was once a director of the Union Bank of Nigeria. His experience in the financial industry offered him access to the information, supporting materials and relationships that increased his credibility when it came to carrying out his hoax. Because of his prior experience as a bank director, Emmanuel had a thorough understanding of how to act professionally and likely exuded a certain confidence that made his victims feel at ease. However, this scam is the third largest in banking history in the world. Niwude is regarded as one of the smartest criminals in history. The scam's mastermind was once a director of the Union Bank of Nigeria. His experience in the financial industry offered him access to the information, supporting materials and relationships that increased his credibility when it came to carrying out his hoax. Because of his prior experience as a bank director, Emmanuel had a thorough understanding of how to act professionally and likely exuded a certain confidence that made his victims feel at ease. However, this scam is the third largest in banking history in the world. Niwade is regarded as one of the smartest criminals in history. The theft of the Iraqi Central Bank by Kusay Hussein and Nick Leeson's trading losses at Barings Bank are financial scams that are one step ahead of Niwade's prank. For this notorious con artist's dream of making $242 million by selling a fake airport, the target was Nelson Sakaguchi, the director of Brazil's Banco Noroeste, situated in Sao Paulo. He needed to dress like a powerful Nigerian in order to carry out this massive crime. At that time, Paul Ogwuma, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, was the simplest identity for him to assume. Nwude found it simple to adopt this image because he was then the director of the Union Bank of Nigeria. The ability to mimic any banker's personality will thus be a challenge for Nwude. He needs more accomplices in order to carry out the scam in addition to adopting Paul Ogwuma's persona. In order to ensure a successful operation, he used the skills of Emmanuel Ofolue, Nzerebe Okoli, and Obumo Sakwe, as well as the husband and wife team of Christian Ikechukwu Anajemba and Amaka Anajemba. He, posing as Paul Ogwuma, persuaded Sakaguchi to invest in a new airport in Abuja, the capital city of Nigeria, in exchange for a $10 million fee. The whole transaction was for $242 million, of which $191 million was paid in cash, and the balance was made up of unpaid interest from 1995 to 1998. Sakaguchi took the bait and lost big, which hurt Banco Noroeste. But you must be wondering what exposed his scam on the global level. A Spanish global financial services firm called Banco Santander had plans to acquire Banco Noroeste Brazil in 1997. A sizable Hoover was discovered while at a joint meeting to support the acquisition. The Hoover was given a careful inspection because it seemed so enormous. It was discovered that a sizable amount of money was dormant in the Cayman Islands. About two-fifths of the bank's overall worth and half of its capital are contained in this fund. As a result, a criminal investigation team was established in the nations where the parties implicated live. Brazil, Britain, Nigeria, Switzerland, and the United States are the nations in question. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, a recently established anti-graft organization, pursued the con artist in Nigeria. Nelson Sakaguchi was detained at the John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York and sent to Switzerland to face accusations related to opening bank accounts there as part of the scam. The Simonson and Cochrane families, which hold Banco Noroeste, nevertheless contributed the $242 million as damage control and a cushion for the situation. One may assume that this would be sufficient to turn things around, yet the bank failed in 2001. Nelson Sakaguchi was detained at the John F. Kennedy Airport in New York and sent to Switzerland to face fraud-related accusations. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission was established by the Nigerian Parliament in 2002 at the request of former Nigerian President Olusegun Obasanjo. In 2004, Niwude and his accomplices were arrested by the EFCC and charged 86 counts, ranging from bribery and fraudulently seeking advance fees at the Abuja High Court. They all pleaded not guilty to the charges. 
However, the judge, Lawal Gumi, alleged that there was an attempt to bribe court staff. Years later, the case was thrown out by Gumi, who stated that the crime wasn't committed in Abuja as the offense was committed in Lagos, miles away from his jurisdiction. This con artist and his cohorts were arrested outside the courthouse and taken to Lagos. On top of that, this case was one of the major cases of the EFCC after it was constituted. The then chairman of the agency, Nuju Ribadu, alleged that Niwude tried to bribe him with $75,000 cash. Due to the allegations of attempted bribery and the attempted kidnapping of a prosecution witness, Niwude's case became much more challenging. Amaka Anajemba, a member of Niwude's gang, pled guilty and received a sentence of 2.5 years in jail and a $25.5 million fine. Having heard from Sakaguchi, Emmanuel and one of his conspirators, Nzeribe Okoli, later admitted responsibility for the crime. Niwude received five consecutive sentences of five years, totaling 25, while Okoli received four. He was therefore given a total term of 29 years in jail. All of Niwude's possessions were seized in conjunction with this. It was given to the sufferer once more, but to everyone's surprise, in 2006, Niwude filed a lawsuit to recover his assets after he was released from prison, stating that some of the assets were acquired before he committed the offense. He was, however, able to recover $52 million of it. In a court hearing of the case in 2021, Niwude reportedly stated that he didn't know about the $242 million airport scam. He said he was convinced by his legal team, led by Dr. Chris Uchi when he was in prison, to make a plea bargain agreement with the International Council. As per the words of Niwude, I told him that I'm not responsible for the $242 million. I have no knowledge of this money. Thus, I'm not accountable for it. Even if I have access to several of my buddy, the late Christian Anajemba's bank accounts, the EFCC should investigate all the remittances that passed via my accounts. As money entered my accounts, I gave it to Mr. Naresh Asrani, one of my Indian acquaintances who has connections to a Swiss bank, who then executes the exchange on my behalf. He took his commission when the money came in, and I will take mine, and I gave the big cash to Christian Anajemba. Whatever he claims now, one can't be sure whether you should trust this con artist or not for your business. According to the news agency of Nigeria, Niwude was found guilty in 2005 by an Akija High Court of impersonating Paul Oguma a former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, in order to defraud a Brazilian bank. Oguma held the position from October 1, 1993, until May 29, 1999. Between 1995 and 1998, the bank, Banco Noroeste, was stolen $242 million. It was the third largest bank fraud in history at the time of the occurrence, which led to the demise of Banco Noroeste in 2001. This con man persuaded Mr. Nelson Sakaguchi, a director of a bank, to spend $242 million to purchase an airport in Abuja that had not yet been constructed. According to the Anti-Graft Bureau, Sakaguchi, who was duped, paid $191 million for the fictitious airport between 1995 and 1998, with the remaining sum coming from unpaid interest. Justice Joseph Ohiwale condemned Niwude to 25 years in jail for the fraud in 2005. His conviction was the first significant conviction for the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, which had just recently been founded. The culprit of the 242 million fraud further claimed that the senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Olisa Agbakoba, abandoned him two weeks after receiving 27 million naira of the 30 million naira fee he had requested for legal representation in the case. After Mr. Goke Ajayi, I asked Olisa Agbakoba to represent me on stage. I have never attended court or had any prior court experience. He demanded 30 million naira when I brought Agbakoba, and I only gave him 27 million naira. He threatened to withdraw from my case if I did not pay the remaining payment. I advised him to enter hell when he didn't show up for the following adjournment, leaving me stuck in court. The EFCC presented me to Mr. Ricky Tarfa, Niwude stated. The case was postponed until May 24th so that the trial may continue. Justice Mojisola Dada. That's what he claimed before the Nigerian judge. No one knows how authentic his claims are. But to everyone's surprise, the presiding judge, 
adjourned the case till May 24th for continuation of trial. Five Nigerians have gone on trial charged with defrauding a Brazilian bank of $242 million to build a fictitious airport. Prosecutors described the case, which opened at the High Court in Abuja, as the world's single biggest advance fee fraud scam. The five defendants include a housewife, a lawyer, and Emmanuel Niwude, a businessman said by the prosecution to be a former director of Union Bank, the second largest bank in Nigeria. All are accused of tricking an employee of Banco Noroeste in Sao Paulo, the commercial capital of Brazil into paying out $242 million of his bank's money to finance the construction of a fictitious new airport in Abuja. They allegedly did so by promising to pay the Brazilian bank employee a personal commission of more than $13 million on the deal. Over a period of four years, from 1995 to 1998, he transferred $242 million at their behest to various bank accounts around the world. Appearing in court in handcuffs, these guys pleaded not guilty to 86 charges of fraud. To this day, all five of these stand as a stark reminder of what people can do just to make some bucks. Remember to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from the world of scams and undercover crime. And so, dear viewers, it's time we close the chapter on the saga of the made-up airport, hoping that the booms of this story will vibrate through time as a stark reminder of the thin line between illusion and reality. If the thirst for more criminal stories still haunts you, click on the video links popping up. And as always, we'll catch you up in the next video. Until then, stay safe.